All right, so I've got this laser cutter here, right? And I noticed that it's cutting crooked. As in the laser beam isn't coming straight down, it's like coming down sideways. And I could tell in my plastic gears here, which you probably won't be able to see very well on the camera, but on this here piece of stuff, if you look at the side, there you can see it's, it's totally at an angle. It's not coming down straight. Oh, you can see it a lot over here. Ah, so it looks like the beam is like angling up toward the top. And the funny thing is, I had a problem when I first got this where something was stuck under this mirror here and it ended up catching on fire and cracking the mirror. And they sent me a free replacement. But I'm wondering if someone at the factory noticed that it was shooting crooked, jammed something under that mirror to, you know, prop it the other way to get it to straighten out. And that's the stuff that got caught on fire. It'd be kind of a crazy coincidence if that wasn't the case. Because that's exactly the spot I would have to put something right under here to get the mirror to like angle this way a little bit to go straight down. So I actually just did that with a little tiny sliver of wood. I just glued it in there with like a tiny little dot because I don't want to mess anything up. So I'm going to try cutting out some circles. So I just have one centimeter diameter circles here. I don't want to cut out like, you know, whole big things for tests. And I'm going to see if I can get it to cut straight down because that's kind of really important. You know, I'm like making these robot things here and there's all these pieces that have to fit like really exactly and I need everything to cut straight. So I'm going to try that. Oh, and I'm also still uh, on vacation on my way home to Vermont and we're in a hotel right now. I didn't used to ever get hotels, but now that there's a baby involved, you know, stopping on the side of the road to sleep isn't really an option. Anyway, yay, hotel room. But I can't really have a laser blaster blowing out fumes in the hotel room, so I hooked it up to the, the bathroom fan, hoping no one will notice. I just have to make sure I tell I don't tell the hotel hotel manager here about my videos. I, I don't know, I don't know what he think. But anyway, there's not it doesn't give off much fumes anyway. Oh, and I'm cutting quarter inch wood now instead of eighth inch plastic because you can tell the angle a lot better in the thicker material. Yeah, I kind of feel silly just cutting out a bunch of circles. I should put a picture on it. Okay there, I'll cut the stuff out of the circle and then just kind of graze over the green part in the middle. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go over that a couple times. And this is also good because I can check that it's actually going over the same lines and staying, you know, in the same uh, orientation, alignment, whatever you want to call it. I gotta make sure it doesn't stay lined up right. That's what I'm trying to say. Hey look, it's an Adventure Builder coin. Oh, I can see it's still crooked. Let's go adjust that mirror a little bit more. All right, if I position the camera directly over it, I can see it sticking out up, oops, up here more. So that means it's shooting up and left. Here's my little sliver of wood stuck in there. I'm gonna have to put a slightly thicker one down in the corner here, and that should bend it this way and aim it down and like to the right. Good thing I had tweezers with me. That was a little sliver. Oh yeah, there's the old one and there's the new one. The new one's like one and a half times the thickness. Hopefully that's about right. I'm not using the camera for this part because I must concentrate, no dropping the sliver on the lens. Ooh. I always hear people talking about how they tweak their laser blasters or their laser cutters as they call them to get them to work really well. And I always wondered what that meant, tweaking my laser cutter. Now I know, this, this kind of stuff, like putting a little tiny sliver in here to get the mirror to aim straight. Hmm, left 
and right looks pretty good. Ooh. Up and down, still definitely shooting up. Would have been nice if I could just rotate this piece here to change the angle, but it doesn't budge. I wonder if there's a way to make it move. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Alright, mister. Whoa, now that is dead sexy. Just a tiny bit off. But I think I can live with that. Okay, let's try another little experiment here. Let's cut out some gears. Alright, Maestro, hit it! Boy, my silly sucker seems to be doing pretty good. No smoke in here. Oh, oh man, that's so nice. Wood is way more fun to cut out than plastic. Now if I rotate this, it should fit in at, you know, with all the different teeth, presuming it did a good job of cutting it out. And it looks like it does. If I rotate it, it still fits through. That's good. That means it's staying lined up pretty well. Because I was noticing before, if I took a gear out, if it shifted a little bit, it wouldn't fit back in the same hole, which meant it was all crooked and stuff. But I think uh, straightening out the laser beam has helped a lot. I'm going to make a, another gear to match this. And there's a bigger one. And these are both gears that go in my robot I'm making over there. And I'm making them twice as big as the originals because the material is twice as thick. So I could hypothetically use these for a robot that would come out twice as big as that other one there. That is so cool. I love that humans invented this creation. <laughs> oh yeah, those are so nice. I'm very excited about this. And the whole straight and everything. Excellent. Now making a robot out of these, the only concern I have is like the teeth where the grain's going this way. So, you know, the teeth have the grain going the wrong way, they get snap off. I might just have to draw some gears that have like fatter teeth. Like take two of the teeth out of here and spread the rest around so each tooth is fatter. And maybe even have some kind of dip for the teeth or something, like something to uh, impregnate the wood and glue it together better to kind of plasticize them a little bit. Might be able to get away without doing that though. But anyway, it looks like the laser blaster is aiming straight again, which I'm very excited about. Ooh, those look delicious. Here's some information I would have wanted to know if I was thinking about buying one of these. It takes about half as much power to cut through wood as it does through acrylic. At least I'm estimating because I cut through this in one pass with the same amount of power I used to cut through a sheet of acrylic that was half this thickness. So, double thickness, same power. Oh, so exciting. I'm so I love these wood gears. This is going to bring new meaning to like building stuff with wood and nails. Ha <laughs> ha. The other thing I'm super excited about is this whole time I've been hoping that I could like go out into my forest, take a log, like a maple log, cut it into strips in my lumber mill, and then put it in the laser blaster and then, you know, build robots like, like this, right? But I wasn't sure if it was going to work out all right, but these gears, these wood gears, are making me very excited. It's very promising. I think it's going to happen. Oh, and that's good for a lot of reasons. Because, you know, it's environmentally sustainable. Because I can just like, find maple trees that have fallen over. I can think of, like, eight near my house. They're just lying on the ground that fell, like, in a windstorm last year. So, I can use the wood from those. And perfectly good wood. Not rotted or anything. <clears throat> and, uh... Oh, yeah. And then you don't have to worry about, like, plastic and, like petroleum and stuff. I mean, the plastic's cool. I like it as a material, but it is really cool to be able to build something with wood that's like, uh, it's, it's just more environmentally friendly. Just don't light it on fire. Well, you don't want to light your plastic things on fire anyway. Actually, come to think of it, if you were going to light either a plastic toy or a wood toy on fire, 
you'd probably want to light a, a wood toy on fire. Because then, at least you wouldn't get the fumes. They'd both be destroyed regardless. Hmm. Right. Okay. I'll see your one plastic gear. And I'll raise you one, two, three, four wood gears. And a funny symbol. And two of these. I'm going to save one just in case. Let's see what you got.